Hello and welcome back to Dan Cave and welcome back to part two of the Tamiya 112 Suzuki RGV Gamma build series. Uh, so part one's been out for a couple of weeks. Uh, things have gone a little bit slower than I'd hoped, expected, planned. Uh, so we're finally here with part two. Uh, so part two is is fairly short part, so, so it's just going to get the swing arm done. Uh, so some of the components have been primed already, so we're just going to paint them up, uh, do some of the detailed painting, get them assembled, uh, and get that bit done. So probably runs for a little over 20 minutes, so quite a short part. Uh, however, part three, which hopefully will come up quite soon, will then get some of the decal work done on uh, the main fairing parts. And that's where uh, I've had some problems in the last few weeks with the progress I have made. Uh, so some of you that follow ISM, uh, if you watch the Friday Night Live show, you'll have seen some of the problems I've had with the decals on, on this RGV. So uh, replacements have been found and work is in progress to uh, correct those mistakes. So unfortunately for this part, we've only got the swing arm to show in progress. So uh, however, anyway, you know, thanks for coming to watch. Uh, put your feet up, sit back, enjoy the show and... Uh, if you've not done so already, please give a subscribe and please drop a like if you can. So uh, I'll come back at the end with a little bit of a summary. So enjoy the show. So there is no hanging about today. Uh, it's straight into the spray booth with the swing arm. Uh, so the swing arm was primed in part one uh, with UMP gloss black. Uh, and now it's getting its, its base coat of Tami X11. Uh, so I've thinned that down with uh, Mr. Hobby Color Aqueous Thinners. Uh, and sprays absolutely fantastically. Uh, so first coats are fairly light, uh, just to get a little bit of the base color down. Uh, we've also got the rear shock assembly uh, to airbrush as well. And I think off screen I've done... Uh, some other small little bits and pieces that go with that. Uh, so I think it gets about three coats in total uh, and just letting it sit for about 10 to 15 minutes between coats. Uh, these Tammy acrylics do flash off very, very quickly. Uh, but given that they're acrylics, uh, they can be quite soft for a few days. They can be, uh, they can be quite fragile. Uh, Tammy is not so bad. Some of the other brands, uh, particularly Ammo, the, those acrylics can stay very fragile. So you do need to be careful handling parts afterwards, uh, even if you think they've they've dried. Uh, so I think this is now coat number three gone on uh, onto those parts, uh, and slightly out of shot again. So those parts have been left to sit for at least a day. Uh, I'm still wearing a glove because they, they can still be quite fragile. And I'm just going to pick out some of the details uh, using Ravel uh, Satin Black. Uh, I think it's number 302. Uh, so you could mask everything up. You could airbrush it. Uh, that's not a problem. Uh, but it is quite... Some of the shapes are quite detailed. So it could be quite a lot of masking for some very small parts. I just thought, just get in there with a detail brush. Uh, and just brush paint it. Uh, so the Ravel Aquas, the, I find them brush painting very, very good. Uh, sometimes a little bit of water just to thin them a little bit uh, will make them flow uh, even better. Uh, sometimes add a little bit of flow improver as well, particularly if it's a large area, and that just helps kind of slow down that drying process and helps them self-level a little bit better. Uh, but for something like this, it's just coming neat from the pot. So I am kind of wrapping the paint around to the back of the swing arm, even though most of that won't be visible on the bike anyway. Uh, but just, just make sure it's consistently done. So the brush I'm using here today is a one of Ravel's fine paint brushes. Uh, so they've got 
got a triangular handle on them and they're quite thick so they're actually quite i find them quite comfortable to hold they do sit quite neatly uh, in my hand uh and i just find that sometimes it's easier to brush paint with them compared to kind of your traditional quite quite thin paint brush that you'd get for a fine detail So we're continuing on with the little bit of brush painting work that we want to do. There's quite a few, well, there's a handful of little parts on the swing arm that are uh, mounted separately and painted in semi-gloss black or satin black. So once I'm all happy with that, uh, it's a rear shock. It's a central part of the shock, so that's gonna get masked up because uh, the top end of it, I think is airbrushed in uh, titanium gold x31 i think it is so it's just a quick little masking job we'll mask around the kind of main uh, oleo of the shock and then mask around the bottom end which will stay in its original color and that'll go off for airbrushing uh, the other end of the shock assembly with the reservoir on it that also needs to get masked up uh the reservoir itself is supposed to be painted in i think it's xf19 sky gray which i didn't have to hand uh so i just picked out a similar sky gray color that i had uh, i think it's an ammo sky gray so it's off over to the airbrush booth uh, to spray that sky gray color on the rear shock reservoir. And once again, I'm out of shot. Now, I promise this will be fixed in future builds. Uh, I've finally got a different camera mount for the spray booth. So that gives me uh, basically a much better angle to look at what I'm spraying. I think it's more of a top down angle. Uh, the, just the angle it was at and the angle the camera was at just it wasn't natural for me when I'm airbrushing hence a lot of the time I completely missed uh, what I'm actually spraying but that bit is done and we're happy with that and we can start removing the masking so you can see that titanium gold next to the x11 silver does actually produce quite a nice contrast So next up is the rear disc. So that again was primed uh, using UMP gloss black. Uh, and I'm now just detail painting the inner part of that with uh, X32 uh, titanium silver. Uh, so the main part of the disc has been done in, I think it was XF56 metallic gray, which is a kind of a steel color. And I just brush painted the center part. Once again, you could mask all this up uh, and airbrush it, uh, but just with the, the kind of way the shape's going around, it just seemed easier to, to just brush paint it. And that looks quite good. So there's also some titanium silver on the sprockets. So the chain itself has been airbrushed using ammo. Uh, I think it's titanium blue. So the color call out from Tammy in this kit was it was actually X13 metallic blue, which I didn't have to hand. So uh, I just went with a color I did have. It was probably not as blue as uh, metallic blue, uh, but it gives uh, quite a nice metallic blue finish, the color I have used. A little bit more of a subtle contrast to everything else. So as you can see, I've sped up the footage as I've done that painting. So. So now it's back to do the rear brake caliper. Uh, so a little bit of masking on that. So that brake caliper is getting painted in a mixture of gold and silver. Uh, so I think I've used two and a half times gold to one and a half parts silver using Revell Aqua. Uh, and I do find that kind of gold colors do airbrush better than brush paint. So I've masked and airbrushed it. So I've gone off to the spray booth. And now I come back remove the masking well attempt to remove the masking 
and that part is done uh, so next up is the paint for the rear spring so the color caller i think was x4 uh, from tamio which i didn't have uh, so i'm using a ravel gloss blue uh, so i'm just putting a few drops in a little palette and adding an amount of UMP's uh, acrylic thinners. So that's been off the spray booth, has been sprayed in that gloss blue colour, and that looks spot on to me. So now the individual rollers on the chains, uh, so they, they're going to get picked out with XF56. So I'm just using a very fine detail brush and basically just dotting on each of the the link rollers. So a little bit later on, and not in this part, uh, a little bit later on in the build, I will come back to add uh, some kind of a wash to the chain, which should hopefully bring all those kind of individual colors together uh, and make it stand out a little bit better. So the brake caliper has been left to dry for a bit. Uh, so the last little bit on that is there's the Brembo lettering, uh, which is engraved. Uh, so I'm using some enamel paints, uh, which I haven't used for a long time. So just using a fine brush just to run a little bit of enamel paint into that. So really, I'm just putting down enough to fill uh, the embossed details. And then I'm using a cotton-tipped uh, cocktail stick with a little bit of Windsor & Newton Sansador. Uh, so some odorless, min some odor odorless mineral spirits. Oh, that was a mouthful. Uh, just to clean off the excess enamel paint. Uh, and of course, that mineral thinners will not affect the underlying acrylic paint. So once again, fantastic camera work here. There we go, back in shot. And that little Brembo lettering just comes up. A nice little, nice little job done, and found a use for my old enamel paints as well. Uh, so the top of the rear shock uh, and the rear reservoir is painted in copper, I think, or dark copper. So that was masked up, like most of the other parts, using uh, Tamiya masking tape. And so the sky gray bits and the X11 bits we wanted remaining were masked up. And then we're just left with that copper part at the top. So that is looking pretty decent. So all the individual bits have, you know, they all have quite a little bit of kind of detail painting on them. Uh, so it's always worth, you know, taking your time, you know, patiently going through, you know, Masking up the bits you need masked. Paint, leave it to dry sufficient amount of time, then move on to the next little detail bit of painting. And if you plan your sequence out, you, you can kind of plan it out so that so they go together uh, quite easily, really. So now we're going to start looking at assembling uh, the rear swing arm. Uh, so two main parts will just glue together. And I'm just kind of looking to see how well they fit together. Uh, so obviously there's a little bit of overspray from where the X11 and the primer went down. Uh, so I'm just using uh, a scalpel blade just to scrape away that excess paint. And that'll give a much better kind of bonding surface for the, for the glue that I'm going to use. So I'm using some Tamiya Extra Thin. Uh, and that's going on both sides. Just run a little bit around the mating surfaces. So even if there is some remnants of paint, the Tammy Extra Thin will, will cut through it pretty well. And those parts can get pushed together. Uh, so I'm just going to bind them together using a clothes peg. Uh, and that'll help uh, make sure they're, they're perfectly aligned and well glued together. 
So that's set aside to cure for a number of hours. Uh, once I'm happy with that, I can just pop in the chain. So that's not glued in, that's just slotted in. Uh, and put over a little hub where it sits at the back of the swing arm. So with that in place, the, the next bits to go on are the rear shock assembly. So that needs to be assembled first. And there is a couple of parts and steps for that. So there is one of the longer screws. Uh, it goes up through the top of the shock. Uh, so that will get screwed in. And on the very top of that, there will be a little nut will go on later in the build process where that rear shock attaches uh, to the back of the frame. So just patiently screw that all the way through. Try not to drop your screwdriver. And as you can see, there's some of the threads appear through the top of the assembly. And the nut will go on that later. So on the other half of the assembly, uh, the spring goes over that kind of inner damper element. So again, at this stage, because the, the spring is metal, these are acrylic paints, you do need to be quite careful that you don't chip or damage the paint. So the spring is slightly in compression, not by much. Uh, so I'm just looking to check for the clearance. So it doesn't quite fit over, so you need to compress the spring a tiny amount just to get that uh, end of the shock to slide on over. And once it's in place, uh, it's nicely well retained. And then there's a small little piece to glue in, and that basically secures the assembly. Make sure it can't slide back off again. So that's it. That's pretty much the rear shock done as well. Uh, we can now fit that to the swing arm. Uh, there is a screw that will attach through uh, the brackets on the swing arm. There we go. I've got that screw in place. Now got it in shot as well. Well done to me. And that screw is all the way through. Once again, trying to drop your screwdriver. And that is uh, pretty much the entire rear shock assembly completed. So uh, that's part two complete. As you can see, it was a fairly short part. Uh, I've padded it out maybe a little bit. Uh, but yeah, so cover is getting the swing arm, uh, uh, getting that airbrushed, a little bit of detail paint, uh, a few other bits and pieces, get the chain done and, and, and paint it up. So th there's probably still a step to go uh, in terms of adding a little bit of a wash to some of the parts on that. Uh, but because it's not quite into final assembly, I didn't really want to do that yet uh, until I know exactly how the overall bike uh, is going to look when the you know when the engine gets done a little bit as well. Uh, so yeah, so, so that was fairly straightforward. Uh, I think the seam line, as I mentioned in the video, I, I'm still debating whether I go back and uh, maybe smooth that down and give it a little bit of a touch up with some paint. Uh, it depends on how obvious it's going to be on the bike. I'll need to see when, when the frame is assembled and when I start doing some of that and make a decision. But, but other than that, swing arm is done, rear brake disc is done. Uh, so we're all good to go on that. Uh, so thank you all for watching. Uh, if you've not done so already, please give a subscribe and a like and drop a comment if you want to ask any questions or uh, or anything. Uh, just just leave a comment if you like. Uh, always grateful to see the comments from people. So uh, yeah, once again, thanks for watching and we'll catch you all in the next part uh, coming up soon, hopefully. So that's it for now. Bye bye.